Friends, welcome back to part two of our high set math practice series. Again, if you're here for GED, don't worry. These are really gonna help you for your GED test as well. Now, we're ready to get started, but before you do, I really wanna make sure that you familiarize yourself with the formula sheet. In our membership, we have a video that goes over how to use the formula sheet. Whether you're studying for GED or high set, the formula sheets are gonna be a little bit different. So make sure you go watch that formula sheet video and familiarize yourself with it because you can use that on the test. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna do questions six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 in this video series. And again, pause, do the question before me, and then see how I do the question. Okay, let's start. Question number six. Several students are going to ride their bikes from the city park to Lake Kegonsa. I don't know. <laughs> A distance of 25 miles. Okay, so let's go, we're saying from the park to the lake is 25 miles. Okay, they will ride an average of 10 miles per hour, so 10 miles per hour. What is the latest time they can leave the park in order to arrive at the lake by 11 a.m.? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how long it's going to take them to go from the park to the lake. So 25 miles an hour at 10 miles an hour, basically we can just say 25 divided by 10, which gives us 2.5. So two hours, two and a half hours, right? And so we know that two and a half hours is actually going to be two hours, 30 minutes, right? So we can just take 11 minus two hours, 30 minutes. So 11 minus two hours, 30 minutes. Okay, so this is gonna look a little bit different than our regular math because we're dealing with time. So I'm going to take 11, I'm gonna turn it into 10, then I'm gonna change this to 60. And then 60 minutes minus 30 minutes is 30. And then 10 minus two is eight. So the latest they can leave is 8.30. Now I did this where I turned it into minutes. If you wanna just stick with the two and a half and then know that we're talking 30 minutes and say half hour instead of 30 minutes, that's perfectly fine. Do whichever technique works better for you. Question number seven. Ms. Lund placed a seven foot ladder against a wall. Okay, so I'm gonna draw this picture, okay? So here, this is a, a wall. <laughs> And she put a seven foot ladder that ended up being four feet away. So here is the ladder that was seven feet. Okay, she decided that a different 10 foot ladder needed to be used. If Miss Lund wants the longer ladder to rest against the wall at the same angle as the shorter ladder, about how far away from the wall should she place its base? Okay, so you draw it like this and you're like, oh, I must be using the Pythagorean theorem. Actually, we are not. Instead, we're going to be using a ratio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say seven over four equals 10 over X, right? Because I know how tall my ladder is. I know how tall the seven foot one was and the 10 foot. And I need to figure out the distance from the wall so that it maintains that same ratio. So what I'm going to do now that I have this ratio in place is I'm going to do my caterpillar technique. So I'm going to say 10 times four, which is 40, and then I'm going to divide that by seven. Um, people also call it cross multiply. Uh, so 40 divided by seven is 5.7. Well, it's, it's about 5.7. And there's my answer, A. Question number eight. The graph below shows the total value in US dollars of the imports and exports of country W with its only three trade partners, countries X, Y, and Z. In a recent year, what percent of country W's total imports was from country X? Okay, so we're talking about imports, we're not talking about exports. So we don't really even need this export chart. So let's just get rid of it. Okay, so now that that's gone, we can look at this completely. So it says what percent of country W's total imports was from country X. So we're looking at percent. So the first thing I have to do is add up all of import. Okay, so here we can look at X 
is right here at this 40 mark. So we're gonna go 40 and Y is over here at 80. So we're gonna say 40 plus 80 and then Z is also at that 40 mark. So I have 40 plus 80 plus 40 is 160. And then I want to know country X. So right here, country X. So what I can do is I can say 40 over 160, so part over whole. So 40 divided by 160 is going to be 25% of the imports come from country X. Question number nine. What is the solution to 3x squared minus 2x plus 4 equals 0? Okay, this may look a little bit scary. We are doing the quadratic equation. And so I actually have a whole lesson for this inside my membership, Purely Persistent Academy. So let's dive in and look at this together. If you're taking the GED, the formula will be provided. If you're taking the high set, it will not. So you're going to want to remember this little mnemonic device. Okay, so it's uh, Pop Goes the Weasel, right? So we did this in question one in our last video. So here we have x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, memorize that, sing it so that you have it down. Okay, so I have these in, in the proper order. So I need to go a, b, and c. So because they're already in this order, I'm set. So the a goes with the three x squared. So it's the variable, the number that's right in the front. So the number is three. And then b is negative two and c is four. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in my equation. So I have here x is equal to negative b. So that's negative, negative two plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's negative two squared minus Four, and then A, C, all over 2A. Okay, now that we have our problem written down, let's solve for it. So X is equal to two, a negative times a negative two is just a positive two, plus or minus square root. So negative two times negative two is negative four. So negative two squared is just four. And then I have four times three is 12, and then 12 times four is negative 48, all over two times three is six. Okay, x is equal to two plus or minus, so four minus 48 is square root negative 44 over six. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to get rid of the square root negative 44. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your calculator. This is the calculator that many testing sites allow, but not all testing sites do allow this calculator. So the computer should be able to, should be able to type in square root 44. Okay, I want you to type in square root 44. Don't do anything with the negative right now. Okay, so when I type that in, square root 44, look at what I get. Okay, see how it says two root, two square root 11. Okay, so what I'm going to do now with my negative, I'll, I'll show you in a second. So let's go x is equal to two plus or minus two square root 11 over six, but we're not done because we have that negative. To get rid of a negative in a square root, we can take out just that negative, okay? So a negative one is equal to i, which is an imaginary number. So I can just put a little i right here, and that is indicating that I had a negative that, you know, the two root 11, the two is like a negative, okay? Because negative one is just equal to i. So that's kind of where that i comes from. But you look at the answers and none of the answers are what we just came up with, right? So what they're doing is they're taking out two from all of it, okay? So I'm going to go here, x is equal to, take away two, two, Two goes into two just one time. So I'm gonna have one plus or minus, I'm gonna take away the two and I'm left with i square root 11 over six divided by two gives me three. Woo, we did it, b is the answer. And this one was definitely a hard 
question. Now here's the thing, if you are college bound and you're going to have to take some math classes, it's gonna be kind of important that you understand how to do this. If you're not college bound and you're just trying to get your GED or your high set, I would not take the time to focus on a really hard question like this. There are plenty of other questions that you can answer correctly and pass the test, okay? But this is one that I know you can do, but it's just gonna take a little bit of practice. Question number 10. An artist has all her paintings framed with a three inch wide border. She has a painting to be framed that is one foot by 1.5 feet. Which of the following measurements represents the perimeter of the painting with the border? Okay, so when we're finding perimeter, I always like to say that that's the fence. Okay, so we're trying to find this area right here. So all the way around is what we're looking for. Now, if you notice that our answer is going to be in feet, but I'm actually going to turn it all into inches and then at the end I'm going to turn it into feet but you could do it with feet and then turn it into feet right at the beginning uh, whichever way you want okay so let's start over on the right so here I have three inches plus three inches plus one foot so I know one foot is 12 inches so essentially I'm going to go three plus 12 plus three and I get 18 inches and now let's look at the bottom so I'm going to have three plus 1.5 feet. So 12 times 1.5 is 18. So 18, we're looking at inches, plus three equals 24 inches. Now to find the perimeter, I need to take this 24 and I know that the top is also gonna be 24 because it's a rectangle, right? And then over here, I know this one is going to be 18. So I'm going to go 24 plus 24 plus 18 plus 18 and I get 84 inches. Now, because we're dealing with inches and I wanna go with feet, I'm going to go 84 inches divided by 12 inches is going to give me seven feet. And here's my answer right there, E. We made it to the end. Great job. Thank you for being here and really for dedicating your last few minutes to really getting this done and really dedicating this time in your life to getting your GED or your high set. I believe in you. I know you can do this. Believe in yourself too. Okay. Peace friends and God bless.